Now let's take a look at author it now. We'll take a look at setting up some styles and setting up some headers and footers. All right, we'll start off by taking a look at a style object. All right, so we've never actually opened up a style object before and taken a look at it. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go to the standards area, the styles folder, and I'll open up a very common style that comes with every author at library by default, and that is the body text style. Let's take a look at some things going on in this style object. Now you'll notice you have multiple tabs here, the style definition tab, and then a tab for each one of your output formats. All right, now the style definition tab is for entering in the formatting for the style as you'd like to see it in author it, not in your published output, but how that style will appear inside of the author library. So the settings you define here in style definition really have no bearing on what the style looks like when you publish. It's just what your authors are going to see when they're working inside of a topic object. All right, now in the style definition tab, we like to recommend that you set up some formatting for that style that gives the authors a clue as to what that content will look like when it is published. So in general, the style definition tab should be set up similar to what the content may look like in your published output, just to help your authors visualize that content in its published state. Now you have some options here when you're setting up your style. First of all, whether it's a paragraph style or a character style. Now this is rather important because this comes into play inside of your topic object. Let me go ahead and open a topic object here. Let's put those side by side. Now if you have a style designated as a paragraph style, it will display in this list here and it will be organized by the folder that that style object lives in. If you designated your style object as a character style, then it appears in this folder and it will be organized according to the folder that it lives in. All right, so if you're not paying attention to what you're doing when you set up that style object and you're not seeing it in the correct list here, you may have inadvertently not applied the style type. So you may unfortunately find it in the character styles area or vice versa paragraph styles area. That's fine. You can always go back and modify that style object so that it does display in the right location. All right. Now we have some options here for font. The fonts that are available are the fonts that appear on your machine. All right, and you have some options for how to underline the color of the font, some font effects, and the size. You have control over the paragraph formatting, whether there's tab stops, whether you'd like borders, and whether this is a bullet or a number style. All right, so for example, let's say we've got a list bullet style. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll show you the difference here. List bullet style is going to be set up so that it displays with a bullet, or if it was a numbered style, it would display with a number selected here and then you would designate what type of bullet you would like to display. A very important field to keep in mind if you are setting up list styles is the outline number here. The outline number is actually used for each one of your publishing output. So this field is a unique field in that it is referenced for your print help and web output. So if you're setting up some list styles for your web output, for example, and the outline numbering isn't displaying properly, 
go to your style definition tab and check your outline level here. This is where author it is reading that outline level for your HTML output. All right. Now, if you are a list style that doesn't require a number or bullet, let's say that it is a paragraph that follows a list bullet or a list number style, we have this option here for skip numbering. What this will do is still classify that style object as a list style, but it won't give it a number or a bullet. And in that way, you can use it within a list. And we actually have a style set up in your library already for just this type of style called list continue. List continue is used for paragraphs that occur within a bulleted or numbered list. All right, so notice here we've got the skip numbering selected. This is an important designation for both your published output and your author it uh, topic objects as well, because then author it and your published output know what to do with that type of style. Now, speaking of these styles, author it comes with a default set of style objects. And I personally don't like to reinvent the wheel. I'll try to reuse whatever default objects come with the library uh, for a new implementation because I know that those styles work. I also know that the default publishing templates that come with AuthorIt already have these styles set up inside of them. And all I would need to do is modify the formatting associated with those styles. So I wouldn't have to create all of them from scratch in my Word publishing template. All right, so try not to start anew with your styles and your templates. You know, try to reuse what AuthorIt is giving to you because you know it works. You might as well use it, and all you'll need to do is just modify it for your branding scheme.